to bless you with riches that you get to keep. Oh, y'all, y'all ain't, y'all ain't, y'all ain't ready for me. All right. Uh, God is good. Anybody know I'm right about it? Somebody say hallelujah. Watch this, watch this. So God is the only one who can bless you. Let me tell you, if you want to be successful, how you really need to be blessed. Um, this is how you bless. All right. All right yeah, let's try it again. Young people, who want, to be, who want to be successful? Who want to be blessed? Anybody want to be blessed? Anyone got, all right, let me tell you how to be blessed. Um, the best way to be blessed and to be successful in life is when God put his hand on you. Period. Because when God put his hand on you, he will blow you up. He will bless your socks off. He will, he, will, he, will, he, will, he will rise you up. He'll set a table in front of your enemies, and they have to watch you eat. God, will, God, God can bless you. And watch this. And God can bless you in any circumstances. There is no life situation or circumstance that can stop God's blessing from blowing you up. I don't even know how much better to preach this. Y'all ain't ready. Y'all, 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 this is some good preaching. Y'all ain't getting excited enough. All right, watch this. Watch this. All right. Um, I got to go. I got to go. Um, any Bible students? Y'all been around the Bible? Any Bible students in the house? Come on. Y'all know a little bit? Come on. Two fingers. We know. All right, watch this. Um, y'all remember Joseph? God blessed Joseph by giving him a dream. Now, God doesn't give dreams to unfaithful people. I need a vision. Well, you got to be faithful to get a vision. Ain't no need for him to give you a vision if you already know you're not going to do it. So he had to be faithful for God to give him the vision. And all he did was share the vision that God gave him with the people he loved most. And the people he loved most hated on him most, tried to kill the brother, tried to kill him in response to God's vision. Watch this. That was for them. The vision God gave him was for them and their future survival. But because they people and people do what people do, they hated on Joseph to the degree that they wanted to kill him because of the vision. His own brothers threw him. First, they threw him in a pit, dug a pit. Take, imagine, take your little brother, little bro, dig a pit and throw him in the pit. Can I get an amen? And, but guess what? Even in the pit, God's hand was on it. Don't you know God can bless you in a pit? Anybody in here been in the pit of a pandemic? It's been depressing, it's been challenging, and even though you've been going through, even though it seemed like you've been covered over and you've been buried, guess what? God's hand was still on you, and God blessed you even in the midst of a pandemic. Pastor, you don't know nothing about that. Yes, I do. We built this building in a pandemic. God can bless. Come on. When other folk was falling out and passing out, we kept on building. We built during a pandemic because God wanted to prove he can bless you in a pit. He can bless you in a... There is no predicament. There is no situation that can limit God's ability to bless you. Uh, after he got out the pit, they sold him into slavery. God can bless you as a slave. Can I get an amen? He was blessed at Potiphar's house. He was, and Potiphar recognized this dude blessed, put him over everything. Can I get an amen? And because he was blessed, Potiphar's wife started looking at him. Can I get an amen? Because folk are like you sometimes when you bless. Blessed folk look good. Can I get an amen? <laughs> she was like, he's young, blessed, and handsome. Can I get an amen? Oh, come on over here. Put a little blessing on Sister Potiphar. He was like, no. Nah. I love God too much, and your husband is my boss. I ain't even going out like that. She grabbed him in the coat. He came up out the coat. You can, you can have that right there. Your boy out. Anybody know? Come on, somebody. Potiphar was tripping because Potiphar knew his wife wasn't about nothing. Potiphar already knew his wife. Right, that wasn't the first time Potiphar already knew. Potiphar started hating on Joseph and threw him in the prison. Some of y'all, y'all thought because you went to prison or somebody went to prison, life is over. God's hand was on them at the prison. He, he, he was blessed in prison. He turned the prison out for the Lord. Can I get an amen? Everybody saw the anointing. Matter of fact, when the king was looking for somebody to help him to save the kingdom, he went and got a dude out of prison. He, he promoted him. Look, who goes and look for a solution to the country at the prison? This dude was so anointed. <laughs> That the king said, go get that dude out of prison. I need his help. Can I get an amen? Somebody say hallelujah. Anybody know God can promote you? Look, when God, us all young people, if you want to be successful, get your, be godly, be holy. Put yourself in a position where God can put his hand on you. And that's what I'm trying to tell you. Watch this. This, this is the thing. I want y'all to say it with me. Say, it's more spiritual than it is practical. Anybody want to be successful? Put your hand up. Say it with me. Say, it's more spiritual than it is practical. 
Everybody wearing, y'all trying to get all this practical stuff, and it ain't even about the practical. It's more spiritual than it is practical. All, it, all God got to do is want to bless you, and you'll be blessed. And when God raised you up, can't nobody bring you down. Anybody know I'm right about it? Got to blow you up. Got to blow you up and folk be trying to figure out. You, look, I, I'm, I'm, I got to be humble and watch what I say and how I say it. Um, folk trying to figure out what's going on at the key right now. Because we're in pandemic seasons, and we we blessed and growing and thriving in the midst of a pandemic. Hallelujah. And folk trying to figure it out, and it's not rocket science. We ain't blowing up because I'm cold. <laughs> we blowing up because we faithful. Hallelujah. We blown, look, we, we, <laughs> we have, <laughs> oh, I got to be careful. We have, we almost get to the place where we have double our, our attendance than before the pandemic, in the pandemic. And the only reason it's happening is because God put his hand on it. Because that's really all it requires for you to be successful. Because it's more spiritual than it is practical. Somebody give God a hand clap of prayer. Hallelujah. I, I just got I to I gotta get out of here. All right. And it says, and it starts with salvation. He says, you got to get saved when you give your life to the Lord. Because uh, when you give your life to the Lord, God can give you hope. And, and what do our world need more now than hope? See, when you don't have God, you can have all the degrees, everything the world offers, and still be hopeless. How many rich people we see committing suicide? Like, suicide is a thing right now. But the real reason people are suicidal, um, when you don't have God, you'll wind up doing anything. even considering taking your own life. And, with, and if you don't care if you live, you're not really going to be concerned if other people live. Are y'all getting this? This, this is not rocket science. It's about as simple as it can be. Anybody understand it? So the key, y'all, and the key for y'all with y'all children, make sure they get God in their life. You making sure they get education. That's good, but I guarantee you that's only going to take them but so far. That's not going to help them make it through all the challenges that life is going to throw at them. And you should know that by experience. Anybody know I'm right about it? All right, let's go, let's go, let's go. I got one more and I'm out. One more and I'm out. Verse 12 and 13. Y'all ready? We out. Verse 12 and 13. This is the, this is the main one for the youth, amen, and for the older people that feel a little young today. Amen. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for believers in speech and conduct and love and faith and in purity. That's good. That's good right there. Watch this. Um, last point. Game changers bless lives. So watch this. All people and young people give your life to the Lord, and salvation only happens when we personally surrender our life to the Lord. It's time to stop playing. But when we personally surrender our life to the Lord, watch this. God will change the game for, your, for you and your life personally. Personally, God will change you. God will mess you up. God will help you see things from a different perspective. God will start helping you to love what he loves and hate what he hates. God will just flip the script with you. God will radically change your life. And look, and when you start trusting him and obeying him, it gives God opportunity to prove to you that he is loving, that he is caring, that he is powerful, and he's able to change lives. It will be a game-changing experience for you. But then God doesn't stop there. God doesn't just want to change the game for you, God wants you to be a game changer for others. Young folk, you really a game changer when God can use you to change the game at your school. God wants you to change the game in some of the lives of your friends because some of your friends don't have parents to bring them to church. You the only God they gonna ever know. But how can you show them how to get it right until you let God help you to get it right? Anybody here want to be a game changer? I want to I want to win a championship for the Lord. I want to be a game changer for the Lord. Any young people want any game changers in the house? Any game game changes. Come on, somebody. Anybody want to, y'all ready to turn up at school? Y'all ready to get crunk for the Lord? Look, y'all got to be, you, but you got to be bold. You can't be scared if you're going to represent the Lord. I remember I met Elder Truller. We worked at American Airlines. He said, this dude crazy. Because I was radical for the Lord at American Airlines. Well, nobody trying to hear about that. That's, I don't care what you're trying to hear. The Lord is good all the time and all the time. Can I get an Amen. Everybody know I'm right about it, but you got to be bold. You can't be scared because God is a good God. You got to stand on the truth of God. Anybody ready to represent the Lord? Somebody give God a hand clap of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, watch this, watch this. I got to go. He said, 
Even though you're young, don't know, let nobody look down on you because of your youth. Because you're young, you can have a relationship with God just as great as anybody else can. And, and look, and the younger you get started, the easier it'll be. He said, matter of fact, you, even as you're young, God can use you to set an example for people that are older. God can use you to change your parents. God can use you to change your auntie and them. Anybody know I'm right about it? God can use you to change your school teacher. I had one of my kids, the teacher called and said, um, your, your daughter challenged me in school theo theologically, and uh, she said she was so good, almost made me get saved. Can I get an amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. It just, you can, God can use you to change somebody that's old. And he said, how does God want to use you? That you got to be godly in your speech. Anybody here want to be godly? Come on, I had some hands raised. Come on, don't get tired of me now. Anybody want to be godly? You got to start talking godly. Anybody know I'm right about it? Anybody want to be godly? You got to have godly conduct. You got to start acting godly. Anybody want to be godly? You got to love like God. God loves unconditionally. Anybody know I'm right about it? Anybody want to be like God, want to be godly? You got to start trusting God. He said, you need to be godly in your faith. You need to have such faith that it's evident. Everybody know that God had to build the key church. It was humanly impossible. But guess what it did? It highlighted our faith. And we had to have faith when everything was against us. And everybody said we couldn't do it. But all we had was faith, but that's all we needed. And all the naysayers, all the people said we couldn't do it. All I can tell them now, too late. It has already been done in the name of Jesus. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. I'm out, I'm out. And he said, if you want to be godly, you got to be godly. Watch this, young people and older people. You got to be godly in purity. You got to be holy. Stop turning up. Stop acting wild. Stop acting like the world. The choices you make now will, this, will determine your future later. If you make godly choices, you'll get godly results. Can I get an amen? If you, when you go against God's principles, it will never work out for you. All you're going to do is make life more difficult for yourself. Somebody says that when you sin, it's like taking a nail and driving it into a board. And when God forgives you, he takes the back of the hammer and pulls the nail out of your board, but the hole is still left. There's still some consequences from disobeying God that you still got to deal with and live with for the rest of your life. It is so much easier if we just trust him and obey him the first time. Anybody know I'm right about it? Let's pray. Let's pray. Merciful Father, Lord, we love you and we praise you and we thank you for being a good God. Thank you for all that you've done, doing, and will do. Thank you for where you brought us from. Thank you for our young people. Thank you uh, for your word. And we thank you for these great game-changing young people uh, that you're putting in our life. Help them to know that they can be game-changers. Help them to know uh, that they can know you and have a relationship with you for themselves. Use them to be a blessing and an encouragement to their parents um, that people will see Jesus in them, even if they're older, that they'll be a game-changer in the life of their friends and their school will be different because they are enrolled there. Use them in college to be a bright light in a dark situation. Just bless our young people to be game changers for you. Uh, for our older people, help us to be game changers for you. Help us to take church serious, to take you serious so that through us you can be glorified. With every head bowed and eye closed, if there's somebody here today you're not sure you saved, you can get it right. And I just, so if, you, if you're not sure you're saved and you need to get it right, just put your hand in the air, raise it high. Pastor, I'm really not sure I'm saved. There's nothing to play with. Come on. Uh, we need to get it right. Come on. You're really not sure you're saved. We're not going to ask you to say anything. We just want to take you in the back, introduce you to Jesus. Anybody? Anybody? I'm really not sure I'm saved, Pastor, but I need to get it right. Anybody? Anybody? All right, y'all. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. You already know you saved, but you need a church home conducive for your growth. We want to open up the doors of the church. Uh, anybody want to join? Doors of church are open. Anybody want to join? Doors of key church are open. Anybody want to join? Amen. Anybody want to join? Doors of key church are open. All right. All right. To all our visitors, come on, key church. Let's give God praise for them. Thank you all for hanging out with us.
And what we ask is you'll pray about it, but it's, it's not, not time to be playing. Time to get involved and be a part of a church that's really trusting God. We got things we got to do, and God wants to use us to set an example for other people. I have so many friends that just giving up and thinking that the church day is over. No, it's not. I found that out in Lubbock when I saw all them cars at church. Everybody not giving up. Amen. And people need to be saved. So um, if you don't have a church home that's conducive for your growth, uh, pray about it. God put it in your heart. Come on, join up with us. We would love to have you. All right. God is good all the time. If you're not saved and you worship with us online, you can give your life to the Lord right from the comfort and safety of your own home. The Bible says over in, in Romans 10 and 9 that if you believe in your heart, God raised Jesus from the dead, and if you will confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. And if you want to get it right, just bow your head, be sincere with him. You can repeat after me. Say, Dear Father, thank you for loving me so much. You sent your son Jesus to die for my sins. I believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead, and I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. Forgive me of my sins and save me right now, and I promise to do my best to obey you. Thank you, Lord, for saving me right now. And if you prayed that prayer, we want to welcome you to the family of God. Come on, Key Church. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Um, we ask if you gave your life to the Lord online, go on to our website, look for I Am New, and then look for Get Connected. Send us a message. Somebody will contact you, walk you through your salvation, and get you connected to the Key Church. Uh, if you want to be a blessing to the Key Church, remember a few ways you could do that. You can download an app called Giblify, and then... Look for the key church. You'll see my picture. You can put your debit or credit card information into that secure account. It makes giving very easy and convenient. Don't feel comfortable giving online. You can always mail your offering into the key church, P.O. Box 50793, Fort Worth, Texas, 76105. Or if you're worshiping with us in person, we're giving boxes again at each corner of our sanctuary. The envelope's there. Ushers have envelopes. You can leave your offering on the way out. Come on, y'all. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Uh, God put this on my heart. Let's pray for our young people. Let's pray for our young people, and let's pray for teachers and all of that uh, as we are back in the school season. Amen. Um, I'm going to also pray for Come Back to Church Sunday. We're going to do that September the 18th uh, is our goal, and we want everybody to come back to church. Let's show our world and show the community we're serious about church as well. We're serious about church. It's time to come back. All right, let's pray. Merciful Father, Lord, we love you. We thank you for the rise of the youth service that we had today. We ask you to bless our youth in a tremendous way. And, Lord, as they're going back to school, Lord, we ask you to keep them safe from a virus, Lord. We ask you to keep them safe from violence. Uh, we ask that you'll bless the teachers to love what they do and regain love for what they do and to pour into our kids. But help all of them to know that church is important because they can learn about you here. They're not going to learn about you anywhere else. So bless our young people to prioritize going to church and living godly. And so, Lord, we ask that you do all of that in Jesus' name. Bless us all to come back to church. We ask you to do it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, y'all, let's give God a hand clap of praise. Thank y'all so much for a good, faithful Sunday. Amen. Come on, come on, let's bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.